All right, what's up guys? Uh, back with another technique specific video that I wanted to share. Uh, this one's a little bit more sneaky. It's a technique that everybody knows about. It's just kind of throwing it at a different time and for a different reason. So uh, it's a frog. And one of the reasons I like a frog in the springtime, kind of during the pre-spawn, spawn time, is because not a lot of guys throw it this time of year. Of course, when you think of a frog, you think summertime, fall, um, you know, heat of the summer, throwing it in, in super heavy cover, trying to get those bass out of there. Uh, I think of it a lot in the fall in the Tennessee River, you know, throwing those giant football field mats and, and catch them on a frog that way. But in the springtime, a frog can be kind of one of those sneaky things that um, not a lot of people are doing, but it can get you some really big bites. So that's kind of really what I wanted to share is don't be afraid to throw this thing earlier than you feel like you should. Um, here on Clarks Hill, the water is in upper 50s, lower 60s, kind of depending on where you are. And a frog, it's it's not quite there yet, but man, it's getting close. I've had a couple of blow ups on it and it won't be long before they are swallowing this thing. So um, don't be afraid to throw a frog up in that real thick, heavy cover during the pre-spawn, spawn type time. Um, you'll get you'll get some really big bites, so it's definitely worth it. Um, it can be tough to slow down and and do it. Um, I found that you got to do it pretty slow, and you got to be pretty methodical about it, uh, which can be difficult during this time of year because you want to cover water, cover water, catch more fish. But um, working this frog slowly around places where you think they should be, you know, where you think the big ones are. Uh, you'll be surprised how many kind of spawning bass or about to be spawning bass will just destroy this thing. Um, so setup for a frog for me is super basic, super cheap. Um, a frog is, you know, the bites are pretty visual. Um, you don't need a super sensitive rod you need a strong rod but you don't need like a crazy sensitive rod you just need basically a heavy to extra heavy rod depending on what you're throwing at <laughs> and just a reel that's fast enough to winch them out it doesn't have to be a, an amazing reel this is an old 13 fishing reel i had it's kind of junky honestly um but i've got 50 pound braid on it and I've got a seven foot heavy uh, Berkley lightning rod, which you can buy at Walmart for 40 bucks like I did. And uh, it ain't pretty, but it, it catches a ton of frog fish. Um, whenever I'm on a, on a frog bite, this is usually what I'm reaching for. I like the seven foot because I can still be accurate with it, especially this time of year. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm putting it in some very specific places, trying to get at those spawning fish that might be up behind some wood cover or up in some bushes or something. So I want something I can be nice and accurate with and make some really pinpoint casts. Um, but then of course I want it to be strong and, and heavy enough to get them out of that cover because they're gonna eat it and they're gonna dig down in that cover. You gotta be able to get them out. So you need, you know, I would say 50 to 65 pound braid. Um, I use 50 a lot on Clark's Hill. It's a lot more open, open water frogging. Like I said, we do have some maiden's cane here. Um, it's been a couple years since the water's been high enough for the maiden's cane to play. So maybe it will this year, maybe not. Um, but I would say 50 pound braid will get you get get you through most. Um, kind of open water situations. If you're fishing heavy grass, I would definitely go up to that 65. Some guys even do 80 pound braid. Um, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, one of the few times I'll use a really fast reel. Uh, most of the time I don't like fast reels, but with a frog, you gotta be able to get that line in quick and then lay the wood to them. So high speed reel is definitely important for a, f a frog and then heavy rod at least, sometimes extra heavy again, depending on the cover you're fishing. As for the frog, I don't have a particular frog that I gravitate to. Um, I use a lot of different ones for a lot of different situations. The spring and early summer specifically, I really like a poppin' frog. Um, so of course there's Spro. This one happens to be a jackal gavacho frog. Um, the main thing I want is a frog that I can walk really easily and one that I can walk almost in place. 
So I want this thing to be walking and going side to side without really moving any closer to me. And a frog that can do that is the frog you want, uh, especially this time of year, because you want to get this thing up into that cover um, where you know that, that big one might have a bed. And then you want to walk it back and forth kind of right over the top. And I don't know if it just pisses them off or if they're, you know, I don't know. I don't know why they attack it. I guess it just makes them angry this time of year. Um, but having that thing just sitting over their head kind of going back and forth, eventually they'll come up and destroy it. So that's when you got to be ready. Springtime, I love a popping frog. I like one that I can walk and has a really nice tight walk and it's really easy to. Um, and then, like I said, just be methodical. It, this is not a technique, um, especially this time of year, that you're gonna get a lot of bites, um, but it could be the one that gets you the big bite that you need during a tournament, or if you're just having a fun day of fishing. You know, if, if you want a shot at a real big one, um, typically a frog is a good way to go. Um, Especially on Clark's Hill, some some related lakes um, on this chain, you know, a frog is not something that a lot of guys throw, so it's something they definitely don't see as often. So you know, I would break it out, experiment, have fun with it. And then of course, if you're fishing places with grass, so the Tennessee River, places out in Texas, Florida, um, you know, whatever. Um, it's hard to go wrong with a frog. You can you can use it so many different ways, whether it's open water, heavy cover, heavy grass, sparse grass, uh, you'll catch them. So uh, just remember, springtime, don't be afraid to start throwing this thing. Once that water hits like 60, they'll, they'll eat it, I promise. So lock it in your hand if you have to, but you will catch some good fish on a frog if you, if you fish it enough. Um, so, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind and you know if you get a good sunny day like this you know and you got some good shaded areas or some heavy cover toss that thing in there and see what happens you might be surprised